maybe number one, number two, you go to one of those schools. And by the way, I went to Pokwari School, which is a good school. Um, <laughs> the best school. <laughs> Thank you. So you think that if, if anybody, if we, were, if we were here and you ask anybody, um, how would you become successful? Uh, most often, if you graduate, they will say that maybe if you find a government job, you know, not the government civil servant, but government job, like the top one, you know, politician, civil, you know, uh, minister. If you don't get that one, then you'll be looking at maybe if I get to America, if I get to England, isn't it? And then if you look at the other ones, some of us who have been able to organize, maybe uh, you form a church, you become powerful. So if you look at our community, if you look at our country, the people who have become financially successful, it's obvious. You know, or maybe if you have a political link, you get a contract and uh, you're a big man. And then, or if you sing, or you become a footballer. Now, I dare say that the majority of us may not have those obvious talent or so-called opportunity. And if you put American visa here today, if you put American visa here now, I don't know how many of us will stay. Uh, or we can try a challenge. <laughs> Almost everyone will try to say that there is an opportunity somewhere. So we've been conditioned right from the beginning that what we have is poor. What we have is nothing. You hear that if I go somewhere, and I'm sure that those of you whose parents or brothers or sisters or friends are outside the country, they are trying to get you out, isn't it? And, and so it makes you feel like, how am I going to be successful here? Uh, today, we will challenge that. We will challenge that. So that you, because um, how you think is really who you are. If anybody wants, if anybody wants to control you, you control your mind. It's the engine you have. And how you develop the mind, one of it is school. You know, the family you come from, then the school. And for us as Africans, a lot of church, you know. So the message you are hearing every day, they have shaped what you have become. So your belief of yourself is really what uh, you've been allowed to see. So you are in Ghana, you look at TV. TV. You watch American movie. Somebody will say glass and go on, which means when you get there, it's opportunity. If somebody's in America, he sees Ghana, what do they see? They never show the good things. Poverty, isn't it? If there is a war in Africa, you see it on CNN. They will never go to come and go university. To show you all the beautiful people going to school. So when you are here, it's obvious, subconsciously, and the kind of education that we've been giving, um, I mean the one that I had when I was in school, a lot of the, the things that they taught in school, um, they didn't mention my grandfather's name. You know, they mentioned Newton, Faraday. They never mention anything, and I'm sure that in it is the same. They're just trying to tell you the standard, and obviously it's English or American. So then how would you believe in what you have, who you are, and even in your environment? Okay, and the moment you don't believe in what you have and who you are, then there's nothing that they give you that you appreciate. All right, so you even give the gold away. You can see it. I mean, who are mining our gold? check the mining companies here. That's right. Those who are drilling our oil are they Ghanaians. That's right. Look at the big shops in Ghana. Who own them? Okay. So the problem is what? It's how we've been taught to see ourselves. If you put the visa there, as I said, you go. And then the Chinese are what? Coming. There is something that they know that we don't know. Right. So uh, today we'll talk about finance, we'll talk about some bit of business, we'll talk about identity. If you don't have the right identity, you don't have freedom. Life begins when you know what you're born to do. All right, what you're born to do. And you have no identity if you don't have any sense of history. And if your sense of history is negative, then your identity is negative. And that's what you have told us. 
So if I came in with suit and tie, I would be sharply what? Dressed. If I come in with a hotel or something like that, he's a, he's a chief. Right. If I go to the bank and I'm in suit and tie, the guy does not even look at my ID where. Because he automatically believes that I'm an honest man. If I want to go and get baptized in some other places, my name, Kwabna, they have to find Mike or something. For me, if I was speaking Chi or Ga, if I go to school, then it has to be what? English. So these are people that you're talking about. Even your national language, official Ghanaian language is English. <laughs> We've not been able to even add even maybe one of our languages or two as official. So everything that we have have not been formalized, if you want to use that word. And yet they are saying that we should develop. How are we going to do it? I had two grandparents. My grandfather, Eddie Janky, didn't go to school. He had his own truck. He had Coco Farm, Orange Farm, sheep. He had two wives. Uh, they will not allow us to have two. So, By the way, I came here with my wife, Marie. <laughs> the other one went to school. He was a teacher. Thirty years to the death of my, 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 my grandfather, he had he bought a lot of sand and he was selling them to take care of himself. The other one went to school. They didn't have anything. Could not even build a house. Is school not good? I wouldn't say so. It is what he, they put in school. So when you finish school, just as I finish, I did my first degree in engineering, second degree in engineering. They didn't teach us anything about money. The best one of our lecturers told us was that an engineer will become a chief engineer. You know, it's not like finish the school, go and build an industry, which is engineering. Okay, so they are thinking that when you come out, there will be some people from heaven who will come and build industry so that you go and work. Now, when you complete school, you are, I know, we know that. Who is building the, uh, the company? So you have a lot of graduates come out looking for job that somebody from heaven should come and what? Create. Now the thing is that if they, didn't, they don't teach you about money, turning any idea into business will become so difficult. So if you want to keep people poor, what do you, what do you hide from them? That's right. The information on money. The information on how to build anything. Just wait, get a job. So we all write CVs. And if they don't take you, you think you're hopeless. And that's why a lot of our people, between, let's say, those who finish JSS and SS, they go through the desert trying to get into. All right. So uh, that will be my introduction. So we have to work on the history and teach yourself history that is beyond what the Europeans came to teach you. Read it because they will not put it in school. Okay? Read it yourself. That now there's internet. Challenge yourself. Because we always hear, oh, the whites are very intelligent. The Africans are stupid. If you put any of our big men here, they will finish. But if you're paying attention, by the time you, you they finish presenting, you see that they have raised everybody. And they have put us down. Just pay attention. Anytime you go for any presentation, just pay attention. All the examples that they give, some people are very powerful, and we cannot be trusted. We are corrupt. We don't know our direction. We are lost. Even when you go, you see that. What is the color of Jesus in your church? And the color of the devil? Angels. Demons. Okay. Are we challenging that, or are we allowing that? Knowing that, it's our responsibility. I cannot teach you money, or I can't share money with you in terms of information if you don't value who you are. Forget it. That's why a doctor will be here as a house, wife, children, and say that Ghana is that's not worth it. I want to go. And they will go. All right. And I'm saying that the history is very important, so work on it. You, you are likely not different from me. When I finish, I don't really know any much about our history. We know the culture. You dance, kete, you, you, kete, you do all those. But that's not the history I'm talking about. 
talking of the consciousness to see yourself as a human being. And that the Chinese or the European is no better than you. And that the words that come from your mouth when you are describing your people will not be negative. Right? It will not be mistrust. It will not be we can't do it. If you switch those words, it means that you have become conscious. You talk to yourself just like you will respect. You see some European come here with Chalawati and uh, anytime you see the government cut anything, it's likely that you see some European boy somewhere. Isn't it? Yes. So we have to work on that. So that you see yourself as God made you. Steady it. I'm not talking of 500 year history. I'm talking of 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Go and read it. It's not, it's not difficult. So that you repair that. If you don't repair that, you will never cherish what you have. That's why you can see a lot of young women trying to change all those things going through, you know, and inject their body, change the skin, change the hair, change the name, change everything. And they're on TV, and they are an example for our women. And government is not doing anything about it. All right. So you, it's not money. Let's talk about the identity first, because it's a major problem. If the identity is not there, we will travel. We will go. And foreigners will come and take over everything. Even if you pick coach, you pick the white man, a lot of money. We pick our own, we don't even pay him. <laughs> so your financial knowledge is responsible or is your responsibility? Now let's talk about finance. It's your responsibility. It's not anybody's responsibility. It's not the government. I dare say, even though I'm a Christian, it is not God. It is your responsibility. If you want to build this house, it's your responsibility to make sure that you have the land, you have the materials, you have the right engineer, and then you can build a house. You want to build good financial life, it is your responsibility. In as much as they tell you, God will make you rich, they have told us for 30 years. If you don't work, if you don't have structure, if you don't have plan, Money is not a miracle. Okay? That's why God is going to IMF. It is not what? A miracle. It is your responsibility. So you must decide, I want to be. Yes. At least have a plan. Five years, ten years. If I have nothing today, 2022, 2032, I want to have 10,000, 100,000, 50,000. You must decide that. It is your choice. If you don't decide, then you are just hoping that by chance you will win Lotto. Okay? But life is not about Lotto. Life is about structure. You must have a structure that you follow. That's why when you went to school, uh, whatever course that you did, they had a structure. Tuesday you go for this course. You are going to be here for four years. If you fail this course, you have to write again. They will not give you the certificate until you want. Pass. It's a structure. It was not a miracle. So almost everything that you have here, you have to put in the work, the time. But when it comes to money, you are hoping that supernaturally your life will, what? will change. I challenge that. It is not true. Very few people will win lotto. Mm. A lot of us, we have to work. How many people have given you 10,000 all your life? You are dead, then somebody will just call you and give you 10,000. May I have not had that. All right. Any money that I've had, I work for it. So you must desire to be wealthy, at least. You must have a plan. Don't, don't hope that it will change. It has not changed. Not that. If you are 30 years there, you should know. It has not changed. And there are two problems in this world. There's a money problem and all the other problems to put together. Somebody said that if you have a spray, if money is a spray and you're killing gems, eh, money will kill about 99%. <laughs> all right. 99 what? Percent. Everything that we are here. I mean, this is what? It's money. When I was coming, I had to buy fuel. Uh, you eat. It's what? Money. Never underplay it. Never play the money down. If you solve money problem, a lot of other problems will be solved. Those gentlemen who have wives, women, um, even if she's, you know, she's angry and you give her money, uh, you can't be romantic when you don't have money. Never forget that. <laughs> uh, all right. Is that true? 
I mean, just ask the woman if the men, you don't believe it. <laughs> it's not true. No problem. <laughs> so, you see a very old man with a very young woman. The only factor I dare say is what? So, it solves a lot of problems. Your profession... A lot of the times, professions are like, it's something that you do for free, so to say. The salary really is not the right compensation. So, never think that if you're, if you're a nurse, they will pay you enough. It's just, they just compensate you. It's just like Roman sister, or medical officer, or police officer. Nobody will pay you what you really are worth. Never forget that. So, you don't fight for salary increase, so that you become wealthy. No. There's another information that you must have so that you can build the money. Because if you don't solve the money side, then almost other thing uh, will not be in, 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 in right position. So money is key. Settle that. Desire that. Don't put up with poverty to say that I don't want enough. You must want enough. If not for yourself, if you go to another uh, place that you can build 100 houses for people, would that be wrong? No, but you can desire that and you'll still not be able to do it because money fuels the vision that you have. Whatever vision that you have, the fuel is what? Money. You can have a nice car. If you don't have fuel, it's useless. You can have a nice degree. If you don't have cash, nobody will listen to you. Hmm? Nobody will listen to you. If people think that you have money, they treat you differently. Are they wrong? They are not wrong. <laughs> they are not wrong. So settle that. Don't, don't say that to me, uh, no, it's not true. If you don't, one of the reasons most of us will not do well financially is because we have not really told ourselves we want to do well financially. So you must tell yourself that I want to do well. So once you settle that, then I must get the right financial education. There's a data that you have as nurse that I don't have. If you send me to any sick person, I will kill her. Because I was not trained. Education is construction. Education is structure, right information. So for you to change your finances, you must educate yourself financially. If I have 100 Ghana cities, somebody will be able, let's say we give, we give two people 100 Ghana. Somebody will just chop the money today. Somebody in 10 years, that 100 Ghana will become 100,000. The difference is in the knowledge that they have, the commitment that they make. So it's like money is like a seed. Maize, those of you who know farming, you have maize, you plant it, you can get another one, isn't it? Before you get to another level, you have 100 bucks. Somebody will just chop it, and that is the end of that money. So whenever money comes to you, you decide. Is this money for eating or for building wealth? And I dare say that if you're 30 years, you should tell yourself, by the time I'm 40, if they say they're not going to pay me for the next six months, the next one year, nothing should change. If the salary does not come next month, are you okay? <laughs> and all of us can do it. All of us can do it. If you put yourself in a regiment, all of us can do it. But if you have worked for 10 years and next month's salary does not come and you'll be tough, it means that you have not paid attention. There's a problem. There's a problem, you know, and part of it is the wrong money data, which I talk about. I said that you are waiting for God to make you rich. That's the wrong money data. And if your pastor here will tell them that if you bring 10%, God will make you rich. That's the wrong money data. Let them bring the money to you, support your church, but don't tell them you are going to become rich because they brought 10%. That is not true. Okay? I grew up in a pastor's place. I'm a Christian. But I'm telling you, if you want to become wealthy, it's not I think. Let's face it, so that you know why you give the tight. Support the church. No problem, but you are not going to become rich because you gave what? They, no. So do it. If, no, but if they want to tell you, if you don't bring it, you will not become rich. No, that's not. That's manipulative. That is manipulative. And it's all over Africa. Africans are the ones that are waiting for God to make them rich because they have sent money to God's house. But God gave them gold. Somebody is mining it. So wrong money data was our financial freedom. You know? 
it's almost everybody wants to become a lawyer or MBA or PhD everywhere. The Chinese here, do they have what degrees do they have? They work like animals. When you give them work, no excuses. So one of the things that will change your finances will be work, your work ethics. They call you to come and say, I'm tired. You're talking back. If you, if, you, if you pick two people, one is very rich, the other one is not that rich, and they all pick themselves from nothing, I can tell you the difference is their work what? Ethics. They don't joke with the work that they have. Never trivialize the work you have. I'm a nurse. That is what you are. Be proud of it. Never take it for granted. Do you remember how you suffered to get that job? And now you have it, it's like nothing. No. They put you somewhere, you are, you are not even proud of the place. You think you're better. No. You will not become rich if you think like that. Because then you are not appreciative of what you have. And the contribution that you're making. Alright? Anything that you have, that you do, that they give you any money. Be so much appreciative of it. And that will change the way you work. No complaints. Be glad of it. Be happy. Your station, be happy of that station. It's a village, and so what? Don't, don't you have human beings there? It's how you work that will change you. Somebody will recognize that ah, you are different. The only way you, get, you, you go up is how you work. That is what changes your finances. If you're looking for a miracle, that is it. How you work. You work with your bosses. They can't count on you. You're hoping that your finances will change. Forget it. It won't change. Unless you open a church and take money from people. That's the only guarantee that you have. Or you win a lotto. If you want to travel America, go there. You see that the people work two, three, four, five jobs. And you are here, they call you, you're, you're always talking. Especially the boys. They never pay attention to the work that they have. They're thinking somewhere. No. Be noted as somebody who works. It doesn't kill anybody. It doesn't kill. And you work in the hospitals. And I know it's tough, but let's face it. A lot of us are not so much happy with the work that we have. You know? So we are thinking, how do I get money? You can't get money if you are not working. Well, so change your work ethics. If they say come 6, come 5.30. If they say close 7, close 7.30. Be dependable. Don't go there and be saying that somebody would have to give me money, you know. All the things that we, the tricks. The ethics are very weak. Yet, 80% of us are religious. Maybe 90% religious, whether Islam or Christianity. And yet, you go to any institution at all, we place money at a high level. The only time that we are very, you know, good people is when it comes to funeral and church and political and something. But when it comes to money, we will ask you for money before I give you what you have to do. That is wrong work ethics. And you will not be that great financially. You will not be great. So if you if you are always doing connection, the money is there, somebody needs it, say no, 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 it's short, so that you can sell it at for a higher price. That's not how you get money. No. And that's why you watch people who have constantly they, they, they cheat, they lie. Do they have it? No. Even if they build houses, go as, go, when, once they go into retirement, they can't even paint it. Because that which really settles the survival of whatever you're building. It's when you build on the truth. Okay? When you build on character. This building has foundation. If the foundation is weak, it does not matter how well you have pressed this. If the, if the, the wrong winds blow, to go down. You know? So you can dress yourself with all the degrees. And your character is everything. And we must work on it. Somebody so vulnerable. The kind of work that you do, almost all the time you see somebody who is just vulnerable. And you're asking for money before what? That's not. You don't become rich that way. So work on that. If you don't change it, whatever you are building, forget it. Because the truth is eternal. It's omnipotent. It's timeless. It works everywhere. All the time. So that is critical. Don't say that I'm just going to do anything to get money. Like the way we, we all know. On TV, you can see these guys are just spending money that they didn't work for. That's why number one could get a lot of us our money because we don't understand money. How can somebody be paying ten percent every month? Is there magician? <laughs> so your work ethics is what guarantees your financial success. Never forget that. 
once you have set some timelines for yourself, then you really don't need to cheat and lie and trick people. Just follow it. If I can save 10 CDs a day, I'm saving it. If I have to do extra, I'll do it. We will come to that session anyway. So that you, 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 you don't need. Don't need to. There are a lot of people who have changed their finances just because they are trustworthy. They treat people well. They will always put life above money. You never know who you're dealing with in the hospital. You never know. Somebody can just buy you something. You're not hoping, you're just working. You're doing your work. But you have told yourself, if I've taken the oath to do this work, I'm doing it. Not for the money. In a wrong way. You know, so work at this is everything. If you, if you take any decision, if you take any position, make sure that they can depend on you. If you cannot do the work, if you know that you, you cannot be dependent on, then don't do it. Tell them, yes, I'm not, I'm not going to be here. The only reason that they trust you with authority is because you're trustworthy. So the moment you lose that trust, don't stay there. And somebody should tell us this. As Africans, your friend sent you money to go and buy land. The, the, the land is 3000 He says it's 6000 And then every morning you send them money devotion. Eh? You are in charge of procurement. All the connection. All the companies that do the, the tender. They, he know all of them. <laughs> One of the things that will make sure that you are constantly in financial difficulties because you compromise. You owe people you pay. You know, your friend will tell you, send me 100 Ghana, I will send you. Now they have even blocked you. All right. If you meet any young man complaining Ghana is difficult, ask them, are you trustworthy? Ask them. Are you, can we trust you? The work that you do, can they trust you? Because a lot of the times it's not Ghana is difficult. It's the character. So you deal with them today, you don't want to deal with them again. Because they lie to you, they trick you. You know? So you are not having referrals. Nobody is trying to call you again because you are like that. Everywhere you go, they don't want to deal with you again. Either you are changing the invoice or you are doing something else. It's wrong. Even though it's very popular in our community, I mean, you see people standing, the people in black, collecting money, nobody will say that it's wrong. So subconsciously, we even put up with anything. All right. So um, the other thing is be, be very much resourceful. Be very much resourceful. Resourcefulness will mean that the little you have, you can get the resource that you want out of it. We built business. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm not a nurse. My mother was a nursing assistant. Um, but we decided to build business. We built it with the little that we had. You know? And with just hard work and commitment and discipline. Everything is possible if you decide to do it. Would it be difficult? Absolutely. Would you fail? Many times. <laughs> you may be say, oh, I won't do it again. But that is life. You pick yourself, you're learning. If, when you're learning how to drive, you make mistakes, isn't it? It gets to a point you become an expert. The same with life and the same with finance. You make mistakes. If you want to build business, you what? You make mistakes. You do a lot of trial and errors. People will run away with your money. The business will fall. Sometimes you go and pick somebody's money and you disappoint them. Those are part of the training. You don't just give up because it's difficult. If you want to quit, quit when it's easy. Don't quit when it is what? Difficult. Don't give up because it's difficult. No? Sit back. Drink water. Go and fight again. Because life, you want to succeed, is not for the weak. Never. Never never check yourself that I can do anything and become successful. You know, you just sleep. When people are waking, you are sleeping. No, it's tough. Your friend who likes you now will be disappointed when they see you succeed. <laughs> All right, so um, the other thing will be build your own financial structure. Build your own financial structure. It's a system. You use system to combat system. And system is just a simple procedure that you, have, you follow, and it almost becomes like automatic. Yeah? You, you, you put it in automation. So you say, ah, I don't have a lot of money. Maybe I'm paid 1000 How do I lift myself? You must know that 
maybe the thousand is not enough. You have two uh, children, you and your husband, you and your wife. How much money comes in every month? You must know it. This is the money that comes in. This is how much we spend. So that should inform where you even send your children to school. So when they increase the salary, that's not where you change the apartment. Because the goal is not a comfort today. The goal is how do we build this? How do we save to get to 10000 How do we get uh, 20000 A lot of us will say that it's so difficult. I agree. But almost all of us come from places where there's land. Isn't it? A lot of land. There are places that you can easily do something with 5000 with 2000 and you still practice as a nurse. If you have 200 acre, whatever product that you put on, are you saying that you'll be poor? But we will want to buy the car first. We will want to change the shoe. We have about 100 shares. And the women change their style every week. And then we say that the money is not what? <laughs> the moment you set yourself, I want to get to this then you, you, you stop a lot of things. It's not wrong when you are changing the star, no? But because you have a target, you want to reach that target before you buy that, that nice car or build that nice house. You have a target. I want to get here. I want to multiply the income. I want to grow the money. That is what you do. As a matter of fact, if you're teaching your, ch your child to become first in the class, me, I will teach my child, don't be broke. All right, because with your first class, you still be looking for a job for somebody, you know. So it's not the first class. And almost all the time, if anybody has money sense and they have character, they're not stopping. So, so, so target, you decide. Maybe I want to open a provision shop. Maybe I want to go into farming. Everybody and the, and the things that are special to them. But tell yourself that the money, the work, this whatever salary that I get. I'm going to save maybe 5%, 10%. You say it's not enough. No, there are things that you can stop. Look at your phone. How much is it? It's expensive. If you want to save something to multiply the inflows, you can always do it. It's determination. Do you know how many people have gone to America University for 20, years, uh, for 20 times that they refuse, but they still what? Yes. Why? They want to go to America. Even, let's face it, the girl that you, you know, you went to her for how many times? <laughs> so, when it comes to serious capital expenditure, car, house, school, multiply the money first. So, when we were doing business and we wanted to build, um, you know, somebody will ask you, are you still staying where you was, you were staying? We didn't care. We stayed there for almost 12 years. But we raised the business to a very high level. And then when you took money from the business to build our house, it didn't take us 10 years to build. A few months we built. But the business did not suffer. Now, that is business. When it comes to personal level, it's the same. Anything that you desire to spend money in, you say, let me grow the money so that when I take it, it will not collapse it. And if they decide not to pay me, government tomorrow can say that I'm not. <laughs> if they don't pay you, can you still take care of your family? That should be something that guides you. And I don't think all of us, any of us should depend on one salary, one source of income. No. no. Unless your income is very big. You know, huge. But if it's not, don't say that it's small salary. No, if something comes in. The farmer will not complain because it's just one seed. The farmer will look at, how do I plant this? How do I plant this? So tell yourself that. And um, you, should learn, you should learn about cash flow, what they call cash flow, even if you're not doing business. Go and get an accounting book and read it. Educate yourself. I wonder why they don't teach all of us, all the courses. Engineering, they didn't teach us anything about money. And then the accounting people today didn't teach them anything about service or product. How you come out with a service or product. You know? So they separate them. So they, oh, they were just making us to come and work for government or for others, not us. That is the conditioning. So read. Don't say that to me, I'm a nurse. What do you know about money? Study it. Read about it. 
Don't go to the internet and you are just looking at Shatawali. Read about it. <laughs> Read. If they say any term you don't understand, ask somebody. What does this mean? Cash flow. They say some things are liabilities. It means that it doesn't bring you any money. You know? They say some things are assets. They bring you money. You know? So if you have one mobile money joint, that becomes what? An asset. Brings you money. Brings you 20 cities every month. That is money. And always be very happy if you start something and you see one city from it as a profit. Be very happy. It's really not in the business idea. It's how organized you are with that idea. You know? Somebody is selling water. Somebody is also selling voltage. It's not the same water. It's the structure that runs it. It's not so much how special. Somebody say, I'm always looking for business idea. Are you sure? When you move out of your house to the station, you can see 100 businesses. And Kose Amansa has a house provision shop. Yeah, he's selling cocoa. Watch is here. You say you don't see business. What business do you want to see? Somebody says to Zafi, eh, she has 10 points. 10 points. You think that person is, is, is poor? Not at all. Somebody has cocoa, 10 points. And you think that person is poor? It's only the educated people who think like that. The people on the street, they don't think like that. They understand money better than us, I tell you. They do. I know somebody who says uh, kebab every evening. Seven places. <laughs> Somebody's popcorn. Indomie. And you say you are looking for a special idea. You don't need a special idea. Anything that people need that you can start with little. You, there is somebody. You, you have a son, daughter, somebody who stays with you. Even though you don't have time, you can always look at how do we sit down and plan to do this. So that you start to get money from that. The thing is the commitment, the managerial skills that you, are, you develop. Those are the things that will change the finances. So we are injecting that. Somebody comes from a place that they, they weave kente. You go there every weekend, you go for funeral. You don't see the business opportunities there. You should. And the internet and social media has brought a lot of changes. You know? Ten years back, you could not call anybody. Just about now, you can call anybody with WhatsApp calls. Is that not true? You have friends that you can just send pictures to everywhere. As a matter of fact, these old media houses are struggling because anybody at all, there are people that you know them just because they are, they are on Facebook. And they are as powerful as any, pers any media person that you know back then. Hmm? And the only thing they have is what? It's their phone. Whether they are insulting us or not, no. Just but, you know, they, they, they have created serious presence just because of what? So if you think 20 years ago, you must bring the thinking in the present. You know, you have to be present that this is a tool, it's a financial tool. It's a, it's a tool to organize you. It's not just for course. It's a tool to make you, to make your, your voice louder. All right. There are people who are using Instagram to make money now. All that they sell is maybe in toast. You know? You, there's always a skill that every one of us has. No, but no, you say that I'm a nurse, but there are so many things that you know. Our people want. Maybe you know how to cook well. I say, I don't have time. But you want to change your finances. You must design. Even if you don't have time, you must design and form, find somebody who, can, who you can work with so that that becomes something. They, tell that, they, they always say that we are not able to build a team. You must design and you must plan to pull people together for that vision that you have. All right. Any idea that you have, there's somebody that you can work with, whether that person becomes an employee or a partner, you know, so that you don't spend all your time on everything. Because there's always somebody who's looking for something to do. So we are here, I'm talking, but our businesses are open. If you don't know how to put people together and lead them, then everywhere you go, you must go. So there are people who open shop. You cannot grow like that. Right, so you look, how do I do something? How do I work with people? They say, oh, they will chop your money. Yes, they will chop your money, but you will learn. And you don't have to give up on the idea that uh, I need people to build with. All right, 
I need people to build wealth. And the wealth is in your relationship, it's in your background, it's in your family, it's in your friends. A lot of things that you are looking for that you think they are outside. No, they are very close to you. It's just the reorientation. Being able to look and look where. All right. So, um, look, any idea that will come, up with, look for it. Look, who can help me to do this? Sometimes they don't even have to be part of it, but you pay them and they go off. You know, any idea, any idea that you want to reorganize. There are people, there are network. And in this life, the network that you have built is actually your asset. If you look on your phone now, the people who call you that you know, hmm, or those that you call that will call you back. If, if something happens now, and you have to raise 10,000, if you look at your numbers, how many people can you get who can help you to raise 10,000? If you don't have that, it means your network is very what? Weak. You must build a network of people because your worth is actually in the network that you have built. But some of us, it's just work and then you go home. And then once a while you go to church, you must expand that network. And you must use technology to do that. And if you see somebody do something that you like, be open-minded. Ghanaians are very, I'm sorry to use that word, but we seem to be, you can talk, 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 but they say, ah, this is what I think. Meanwhile, your resource is not good. Your resource is not good, you're not comfortable, but you still don't want to shift positions mentally. you struggle. You know, you struggle. So look at team. You can't change your worth until you look at the network that you have as well. So it's key. If you see somebody in your area who is doing well, talk to them. Teach me. What is it that I don't know? Don't say that, oh, he didn't go to school. The only difference is that you speak English. But he, he has a lot of education that you don't have. That's why he's getting the results that you don't have. You know? So uh, look at that. And mistakes, you will make a lot of them. Don't be scared of the mistakes that you make. Don't be scared of the mistakes that you make. And then be very positive. Be very optimistic very positive person creative ideas come to people who are very much optimistic if you're very negative paranoid even when it can work you still will doubt it all right that's why when somebody makes you to doubt yourself you will never progress you need a lot of confidence to go after anything and you need a lot of positivity and unfortunately we are we we, we have a generation that is very negative towards ourselves yeah? Very, very negative. Very negative. We're always talking about all the bad things. And I ask them, so what are the good things that we have? Can you tell us what? So you have to recondition yourself to be very optimistic. You will see the danger, but you still want to look at what can make this world work. You need positivity. You need positivity. A lot of it. Somebody called me and said that I have 43,000. And thousand pounds. I don't know what to do. Say, Are you sure? I want to travel. I've gone to Dubai. I've gone to Turkey. I still want to travel. I don't know. I have a, I've opened a shop here, but it's not working. I said, Ah, the problem is the way you want. You think you have forty three thousand? I think that is nothing. That's a great achievement. But he has. He doesn't even see it as a great achievement because it's so negative. In Ghana, nobody will help you. Are <laughs> you? How many people have you helped? You don't help anybody and you say that nobody will help you. So it is key. Be very much positive, please. Be very much positive. Those who have built great nations believe in their country. Hmm? Those who have built any great nation, they, are, they believe in their country. They are very proud. Those who nations are struggling, don't believe it. Don't believe in their people. They don't believe in their country. They don't see anything good in their country. Any community that you are, if you don't believe in that community, you will never be prosperous there. So wherever that you are stationed now, start to look at all the good things in that community. You'll be shocked at things that you'll find. It's like people with marry, you know, people who are married. If you can't say, if you can't see all the good things in the other person, you always complain. <laughs> you always complain. The moment you sh you shift that, the same person you start to appreciate. You start to see a lot of things work well. Okay? The same person will do something, the same mind. You, it will be positive for you. But if you're very negative, the same thing, you complain. All right. So look at where you stay, where you work. How can I see the good things here? 
always look for that. If you don't do that, you will always be frustrated. You will say nothing works. And it will take, a, it will take some toll on your health. You are health professionals. Those who are sick and when they come to the hospital and very much you know, optimistic, happy, hopeful, they perform better than those who think that they are going to die the next day. You have to have strong spirit. You know, that does not just work in health, it works in everywhere. Positive spirit is key. Positive spirit is key. And, um, what again? Desire to help others. All the money that you are looking for, help others as well. And don't become rich before you help people. There's somebody that you can put in school, help them. Somebody just need 20 cities to go to school. There's always somebody that you can help at the level that you are. You know, because out of the help, especially if you're looking for business, a lot of the times even the things that you do for free, those are the things that start to become business. I know how to make beads. You make it for your friend. You make it. Then somebody say, "Who made it for you? Bring me two. Or you know how to bake something or cook some food. You give it some, to somebody for free. The next time you start to get orders. So if you don't know how to start anything at all, start to do it for, for free. Don't say that, ah, because I'm going No. Start to do something for free. Spend your time to help somebody. You never know what will come out of that. All right? And don't say that, oh, yeah, mom, no, 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 no. <laughs> Just be so much positive that no matter what they say, you still continue to what? To do it. That's how you build something. And that's why you really become a happy person. You can never see anybody who is happy, who is ungrateful. People who are very sad and hopeless are very ungrateful. They never see anything good. And, they, and if you want to be grateful, help people. There's something that you know that you can always teach somebody. Don't keep it say, it's my secret. Which secret? <laughs> teach. That's how you learn more. Teach whatever that you have found out of life. Teach somebody. Not only your family. Teach. And that's what we teach. For the last two years, we've been talking on Peace FM. In business and finance and entrepreneurship on almost everything my friend Odia and the res response is amazing it's amazing young men who's, who's just called and said that I wanted to go to Dubai but I've stopped retired people who said I've started business again people who live outside Ghana who say I never believed that I would come to Ghana and do anything but when I listen to you you know I see the positives because they say that if you want to come to Ghana the people around you Abroad will tell you, no, 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 what is in Ghana? <laughs> then I ask them, why are the Chinese here? The Indians are here. Go to Spinters and see. All the big shops are what? Yes, and the Africans have churches there. The same Spinters. The big, the big, big buildings are business for foreigners, and the other big buildings are churches for Africans, Ghanaians. <laughs> All right, that's why people want to travel outside because our priorities we must we must shift a little bit of them key areas key areas and so um, the positivity is key share what you know don't hold on share it people are the reason for life you must love them no matter what they can disappoint you but love them be patient with them these things you may think they don't affect finance but they do ideas that come to you is because you have open heart all right so um we will give time for questions hopefully and um those will bring some other things out so if i want to recap i said that study the history we, they have given us european kind of education and so we don't see ourselves in our education the way your grandmother how to handle her family should have been in school. You know, the, the way you take care of the child should have been in school. The way my grandfather handled the finance, they should have taught us that in school. But the finance that they teach us is the, it's not the one that my grandfather knew. All right? I heard a story that a man was about 80 years was dying. And that was the time that his cocoa farm was bringing a lot of money. And that was the time that he was even building. Now tell me how many are crashing for will be building when they are sick. That is the system that works. So the other thing is, if you want to be successful, understand the system. Understand our culture. 
The money is in the culture. The money is in the ground. That's his school. Right? The money is where? In the ground. Look at the people who control money here. Look at the culture and how they understand the culture. So don't think that once you look like a British, it means you are better. No. The money is in the culture. Study the culture. Study the people. That's where the people are. You want to serve people. You open a shop in an area. The people have, let's say, you know, they don't have a lot of money. But you want to make the shop so nice. And you raise the prices. They won't come. You don't understand the people you are serving. So it will not work. Serve the people where they are. Give them the best of service. We buy with price. We don't buy with credit. I, the other day I was asking somebody, how many people in England will be able to build a house if they didn't give them a uh, loan? How many? None. How many people of them will be able to go even go to school if they didn't give them, give them loan? How many will be able to buy a car if they didn't give them loan? Now, that is a debt economy. It's driven on debt. Ghana, we don't have credit card. Do we? I don't have one. So if you're selling something, the people must think of the price before they what? They buy. That's how you sell the people. So you say, oh, my, I'm, a, I'm a developer. We build houses. You say, oh, I want to build a house. Mortgage. How many people can have 300,000? <laughs> so that's why a lot of real estate companies, when you go, it's not just about money, especially if you have family. What will happen to your children here? What will happen to your husband or your wife? And after 30 years, do you really think that if you put everything together, you'll be better off? I doubt. Travel to go and have a look if you want. But traveling just because you need money, what you need is the information. So that any letter that comes to you, you can solve, you can do magic with it. Um, boss, okay, so we can ask questions. All right, thank you so much. I think we can give it up to our speaker today. Mr. Obin Darko for the wonderful insight into how we can be financial independent, how we can make money right here in Ghana. So they want to read some few comments that we are having from Facebook coming in. So Nicholas is saying that I'm highly motivated by this program. Ajoa Adoma is saying that it is very true. You can't be romantic if you don't have money. So Ajoa, we are going to make money to be romantic. Matthew is saying that very true. I'm really enjoying the program. Monica Boatin saying, I'm enjoying the presentation. Thank you so much, Mr. Oben Dako. Azongo Joshua said, fantastic teaching. They are very practical. Iju says, a timeless wisdom, powerful keys to financial freedom. Please take heed. God bless everyone. And Gifty said, I'm enjoying the presentation. So then we want to hold on for now. I think there are a few comments, questions coming from Facebook, but I want to come in-house here. And then listen to a few questions that we have. Anything that we want to share, then we could pick some few comments from Facebook as and when it comes in. So then the questions, we are open for questions now. Okay, I can see hands there. Okay, let me just get closer to one here. Uh, good morning, please. I'm Joseph from Borga. Assuming I find myself in the area that I want to do business, the business plan that I have in mind, it's not moving at that particular place. What can I do to okay. continue with the business? Okay. Thank you. So Should I, I answer know, now? Uh, I don't know how you would want to do Whether you want to put about a few questions or you want to do the one at a time. It's also okay with no, us. No, I can do one at a time. Okay, so, so, so please can, let's okay. do the uh, one at a time. Business, you must serve the community and you must, you must provide what they want. If they don't want that, then you have no business. All right, so it's either you shift the business to where they want it or you change the business if you want to stay in the present community. Yeah. One thing I've observed with those who would like to go outside is that actually over there, you get the chance to work even for like some places, two hours. As you may have a main job, I can go elsewhere, work for two hours, go elsewhere, work for one hour, and all that. But in our system in Ghana, don't permit us. I'm not trying to shift blame, though. Mm. But like, how do we work over this or around this? Yes. Where you go to a company, they need to work eight hours or 12 hours. Other places, even after the eight hours you are in the house, you are free, 
but you won't get a place where they might need you for one hour, two hours, and and pay you. Yeah. Then you just wait at home. Yes, sir. How do we go around? Yes, our system is, is entirely different from their system. So you don't use their solution, right? You look at, okay, maybe I can't get a job uh, somewhere, but I can start to sell something. Our economy is mainly um, an entrepreneurial economy. It means do something for yourself, most often. You know, they have all those jobs because they have a lot of factories, a lot of companies. We are here to do that. So, uh, and hopefully if it's not done in your lifetime, what do you do? So maybe I work as a nurse, but when I come home, I can sell something. You know, I will look at that. Because the essence is for you to get extra income. It's not really you love the work. Is that not true? Uh, or you love, the, you, you love the work so much. It's the money you want. And so the money can come from any decent uh, business that you create for yourself. You know? And I think that's why most people have extra businesses that they do in addition to. And it's the type of structure that we run. So I will look at that. You know, I will look at that. Um, thank you. I'm Mohammed from Tamale. Um, please, we find ourselves in a profession which is, uh, it has a lot of opportunities. But then the problem is that we face more difficulty from our own colleagues. And then the system itself don't give us the chance. Let's say almost all the hospitals in the nation are stationarized. They have a location that you can find them, you can locate them. But then um, there are people that cannot get to the stationarized facilities. So you need to carry the facility to them. And it, that, that is very lucrative. But the moment you start, you see your, your colleagues and then the system itself don't allow you to operate because you can't register such a business. Hospitals on the wheels, you can't register it. Home services, you can't register it. So if you find yourself in this location, what happens to that, your business plan? That is true. Uh, Chief, that is true. Our system, uh, when you say, they say we are blaming, but we are not blaming. Much of it is colonial. Okay? It's designed to make sure that the locals don't succeed. And so a lot of the constrictions, a lot of the difficulties that we meet, from business registration to our institutions, the way they run, it's really, if they have to, if I were president, maybe I will shut everything down and redesign it based on where we want to go. At the moment, they are not taking us anywhere that much. All right, so uh, you're not wrong. And part of it is the kind of education our experts had. Okay, My, many of them would have education from all these countries around the world, not here. So when they come to implement such structures to make it very easy for people to become successful, it becomes a burden to them. And always look at that, because if you look at organizations, any organization uh, that you see in our country, try to copy, even the economy, we try to copy... Some people. So I think that have that understanding that this system has not gone through the stages where it works for us. A lot of our institutions don't really work for us to become successful. All right. So once you understand that, so when your friends or your leaders are trying to push you back, if you're trying to do well, it's because that's the thing that they know. A lot of the times it's not because they hate you, but it's, it's a jacket that they all find themselves in. And so find a way uh, once you have that understanding, then nothing should deter you or nothing should frustrate you, as they say. Because then you understand it. It's like the way our tax people behave. Eh? They, if they go to the foreign companies, they're very decent, isn't it? They go to an Antiama shop, they want to go and chain it. Let's face it. Why should we change somebody's shop because they have not paid anything? Just write them a letter, they go to wherever they want to go. Let them do their business, isn't it? But they have not changed it. They have not changed it. And I don't know if they will change it. All right, and if you backtrack, if you study, that's why I study the history. Always study history. You you'll understand the present very well, and you can project the future. All right, so a lot of our institutions are still basically, uh, they are evolving, but they are not evolving at a speed that will make a lot of things very convenient for us. I, I don't know if, if you get it. Yeah. All right, so then let's go back to Facebook because we have quite a number of people watching from Facebook. So Mami Usa said it's a nice presentation. Hope it was a great wisdom shared. Mami has a question. said, thanks so much, Mr. Obin, for the insight. The question is, how will I combine midwifery with other business as a starter with my little capital? 
Okay. So that's from Mami. I think there's another one on Facebook. I don't know if you want me to read all. So another question from Joshua Zongo on Facebook says that adding value to whatever you do is what makes a difference. Without the value, you're virtually doing nothing. So then how do you add the value to yourself? So there are two questions. Mami want to find out as a starter and then with a little capital as a midwife, how would she be able to do it? And just want to find out how we can add value to ourselves. Amos is also watching, and then Amos says, I'm learning a lot from this. So thank you so much, Mr. Daku. Okay, so um, my mother was a nursing assistant, but she had a jewelry shop. Not a shop, she was selling it on the table over the weekend because it was a market area. Uh, she was able to build her own house out of that. And she will even take the products and go to, uh, you know, some places they, maybe Wednesday is a market day. That's what she was doing. And so I think that mommy would eventually have some few days, some free days. I'm not sure that you are at work 24 hours, 27. You know, so the few days that you have, business, you don't need the big money to start a business that you don't have expertise to run. That's why you start with the letter that you have so that you can grow with the skill. You know, what makes businesses really grow, pick from the ground. It's not how well you started. It's, it's your commitment uh, to the business. So I would say that anything that you call money, that can trade, that can sell something, I always say sell something. Don't go into production. You have to know how to sell it before you produce it. All right? Whatever that you want to sell, somebody has produced it. Go and get some, start to sell. It's like you wanting to start a poultry farm. Uh, me, if I don't have a lot of money, I'll go and buy some eggs and what? And sell. Develop that market so that when my poultry farm is ready, I will not have to beg you to sell my eggs. Always do it the other way around. You want to sell drinks. Uh, you want to produce uh, pineapple uh, juice. But you know how to sell it. Because selling is everything uh, to a business. So I would say that whatever mommy can start to sell, sell it. Uh, the other question is uh, personal development or how do you add value? You can't go where you have not developed yourself to be. And that's why you must commit yourself to reading. And you read for life. The education you had was for certificate and for your profession. But you want to live, you must read books. Even if it's one book a month. And you must, hold, you must have various topics that you read. There is Kindle. There is Kindle as an app. And those of you who know it, download it. Uh, they don't charge much. Almost every book you can find it there. If you don't do that, maybe go and get hard book. But read. Read books. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that a lot of the books that we read, the contents are, are, are foreign. But you still have to culturalize what you, what you read. Okay? You have to customize it. Bring it to the level that the, the, you understand it. But if you're not reading, uh, you're not developing yourself. You must read. And now there's YouTube. There's almost everything that you can teach yourself there. All right? So read. There has to be quality knowledge that you're getting all the time. Because that's really where your life is going. Knowledge is like water. Knowledge is light. If you're in darkness, you put the light off. Even if you have gold here, would you see it? And this is how to develop the mindset to start your own business. Read books. Read books. They will change you. That's how you add value, actually. Okay, thank you. I'm Verontina from Bon Ahafo. Um, I ventured into bakery. It was moving well. But then now, due to the economic hardship and then inflation, fuel prices are going up. Most of my products, um, I was doing it on delivery basics. But due to the fuel increase, I can't do that anymore. And then production is now going down. So how do I go about it? Mm. Thank you. Now the economy, everybody knows, is, is not in a good shape. Um, I think that whatever you're doing now, that you're losing money, hmm? you should not continue to do it like that. Because we don't know. Now the dollar is this, tomorrow is this. It's a, it's a difficult situation for everybody. If you had to buy, let's say, 100 Ghana fuel every day, now it's 200. The capital has gone down, you know, which means that people's ability to spend has also what? Gone down. But then the cost of doing business is doubled, so which means that the, 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 the difference has shrunk, you know. So it's all a stage that you all must find. But uh, if you're not losing, then do it. If you had maybe 30% profit, not losing, not gaining, and stuff. But if you, if you, 
I don't know. But if it gets into losses, I would say then maybe take, take, be patient a little. Let's see what happens to the economy. Unless the people who depend on you so need it that you have to do it not just for the profit, but also for uh, conscience. Yes, something like that. But um, it's, it's not only you. Almost everybody is, is in a way hit. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I, I am Clement Apore, and my question is, is it advisable to start a business with a loan? No. No. And I would say no because um, a loan, some of them charge 5% a month. You have to be a genius to really turn 60% per annum loan into a profitable business. And a lot of the times, if, you are first, if it's your first business, you are likely to make a lot of mistakes. And if your first business fails, it's still part of the learning. A lot of us will fail in our first, second, third, even fourth business. All right? So if you start with loan, then you're going to create a lot of pressure. Because I can tell you, you'll fail. If you don't fail, you have really done well. Is it that you leave, you leave that business and go and start another one, or that same business will be hitting the ground like almost every two, two months? You know? before you start to get the sense. So I would say start with the little that you have. When there's drive, then you can take money. But I think that almost everybody who takes loan in our country gets trouble. Yeah? You, were very, you didn't have problem until you started with that loan. Then now they will not let you sleep. And those people will chase you everywhere. You know it. I don't say, I will say no. You know, if you want to keep your health, do with the one that you have. If you have to go to your friends, fine. But even that, your friends should be comfortable to lose that money. Because you are going to lose it. Uh, no matter how much you pray. <laughs> because you are learning. Never forget that. You are going to learn. So, those of us who have started business with loans, nobody, I mean, if you ask the testimony, you will hear it. It's disheartening. They constantly on you. You become hypersensitive. You, you, you know, you even will be beating your children for nothing. Just because you made the wrong decision to take loan. Your wife will ask you something and it's no fight. Or now it's what? It's a fight. And if you don't take it, they'll say it's a demo. It's not a demo. It's wrong judgment. It's wrong judgment. All right? So I would say, take it easy. Pick it gradually. Even if it fails and you start small, you can start what? Again. If you take 100,000 loan to go and open a nine shop and nobody is coming. But maybe if you start and you start to see the traffic is there. It picks. Business must be designed to, uh, to succeed. You design to what? So see, if it's not just something that just happens. There's a design in it. It's like you're building. You know, you must have a design. The architects must come in. The engineers. Then you have the construction people. It's design. So if you compromise on the things that they recommend, it will crash. Hmm? Then failure will set in. So failure really means that some people didn't pay attention to some things. So I would say... Don't create that pressure on yourself. You know? And if you, have, if you have it, and it's becoming a problem now, because this economy, if you, have, if you have loan, I'm sure you are not sleeping. You know? Yeah. Because your sales have gone down. Your cost of doing business has doubled. You will not have the difference to pay the debt. And they will not say that they are giving you a you. Oh, boy. And they will make you feel like you're a criminal. Meanwhile, you're not a criminal. It's just something that started to go bad or badly. All right, so, yeah. Please, my name is Joyce Lee from Northern Region. Yes, yes. My question is, if you find yourself in a situation whereby you actually desire to save, mm -hmm. so that you will be able to start something. Yes. But here is the case, you have a lot of pressure coming from your family members. Yeah. But how do you handle it? Because they were part of your life when you were schooling. Yes. So do you cut them off so you'll be able to save, or exactly what do you do? Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. I don't think you should cut them off. They didn't cut you off when you, when you needed them. But then you must have regiment. You must say that maybe every month my mother, my father, they need this percentage of my salary. Uh, maybe you can discuss with them. So you are giving them 200 every month, but you want to save something. So maybe you give them 150 and start to keep the 50. Uh, the the, the the force is in the fact that you start to see success in what you have set for yourself. You know? Once you start to see progress, results, some victories, ideas will come. 
All right. So you, you maybe you even if you can't save 50 cities, can you save 20 cities or 10 cities? You know, that for me will, 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 will help. But you can't cut your family. But there are some of them too who just go and give birth anywhere and tell you to take care of them. Uh, that one you have to be firm. That this one is your responsibility. I'm helping, but you must. And some of them, they will call you. To, I need 200 today. If you don't send it, somebody's dying. You say you don't have it today. Oh. Tomorrow, but maybe tomorrow you forgot. You know, you, you will not send. Then, the next day, one week time, they will still, the same thing that they needed yesterday. They will need it today. That means that they are lying. And money. Money is, uh, if you want to get money, uh, it's not about emotions. Hmm? Money is not about emotions. It's about regiment. It's about a system that you have designed, a plan that you are following. So even if they cry to you, if you are like me, if they cry, you will want to give them money. You know, people can appeal to you. People, you are a kind person. You are soft-hearted. Uh, if you do that, then forget about you having money. You can help people, but still, this is what I have designed for myself. So I stick with it. One more brown becker, if you understand the thing. Eh? If you don't have good life, they will tell you that you, you, they sent you to school, you were not able to do anything. So have something that you follow, no matter what, in as much as you want to help your family. Help them. My name is Joyce. I'm also from Northern Region. Yes, Joyce. My question has to do with, uh, there was something I read on finances, money, how to save the 2018 rule. Mm. I know was that they said saving mm -hmm. is alone. You can't build, you can't be rich through savings. Yeah. So how do I apply this 80-20 rule into maybe creating investment or becoming financially independent? So if I understand 80-20 rule, it means that your output, um, 80 will give you 20% or if you... Uh, like whatever I earn, <laughs> mm. I try to depend on the 80 mm. and probably save. save the 20. Okay. So uh, if you save the 20, the, the northern region, there are a lot of things that our parents were doing. Eh? There were a lot of successful people there. What businesses were they running? It's only when they sent us to school that we thought that uh, having cattle was not worth it. But that's a major tool for worth. If somebody has 100 of them, and one is how much? Maybe 5,000 5, or so. How much is that? And that is something that you can easily do if you want to do it. You know, somebody, there are so many things that you can do in the community that you are. Look at what your parents or grandparents were doing to get money. Our economy has not changed that much from that, I tell you. That's why when we are running for, away from that, we have created a lot of poverty. You know, because the service is there. You have a lot of land that you can easily say that these guys can farm. But we don't want to do that. We want to go into the stock market and uh, crypto and forex. I don't know about those, but I think there are a lot you can do. So, ask. Maybe it's not cattle, but it can be sheep. Maybe it's not sheep. It can be something else. Some people go into commodity. They buy it, they save it, uh, they keep it, and they sell it for another price. Until you build the capital to inject into something that you think. But all of us must have a structure uh, that uh, we follow. You know? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. My name is Mohamed Abdullah Amin. Yes, from the northern region. Okay. Actually, my question has to deal with, I am a government worker. Yes, sir. I earn salary at the end of the month. Yeah. I have different ventures where I get money yeah. out of the ventures, yet I'm not able to save. Oh. How do I overcome this? Uh, this one. Uh, Jack, I don't know how many girlfriends you have. <laughs> <laughs> Only one. You see? So if you have, you know, you know where the money goes. Uh, whether they go to the children, maybe if you have more than one wife, maybe you go for a lot of ceremonies, there are a lot of engagements, uh, maybe you change your, you know, you, you paint your, your house. You know, well days, you know, you go, you support a lot of things. So track the money that comes to you. And look at the ones that you can do away with. It has to be a regiment. You have to put yourself, it's like they tell you that if you don't follow this food, something, something, you're going to get this disease. That's how you have to, and this disease is more dangerous than the one that affects your body, actually. 
You know? So, uh, look at your finances and track everything that comes in. And track everything that goes out. And see the ones that you can solve in terms of the ones that go out. And if you can increase the ones that come in, increase that. You, you understand? Maybe you're making 100 from this venture. Can it be 200? Can it be 300? What, what do you have to do? A lot of the times, if what is coming in is not enough, that uh, makes the discipline a bit tough. But uh, look, look at it. If once money is coming in, uh, maybe you're a showman. So you're showing a lot of, you know, but... <laughs> Yeah, so put yourself there. And once you start to do it, you, you'll be happy. There, there's this guy that we work with. Um, my wife said that, Goku, um, you have to put yourself on this formula. So instead of her to give all to Goku, she said that I'm keeping this for you. And she did that for one year. And Goku told us, he said, anytime I think of what I've saved, I'll become a man. You see? Because that is really every, every man's or every woman's desire. To say that I have something. You know, so I think that you don't just get it, you must have something that you, you can say that this is mine. Okay, my name is Francis from Winneba. Yes, sir. Um, mine has to do with like we spend most of our time at the hospital. Yes. So let's say you have the business aside, set aside, mm. you have a shop. Yeah. Right from the start, must you employ a salesperson or you need to be there? Mm. Yes, sir, because you can't be there from morning to evening. Mm. And in order not for someone to collapse your shop for you, how do you select? What do you look out for before you get someone to think positively like mm. you do? Mm. Because when, you, when someone comes that, oh, I will do the work. Mm. I, I need a work to do. Mm. You pick the person. Everybody who comes has their own mentality. Mm. They don't think like mm. who you are. And mm. if you are out of the town, Maybe if you are to be there, the way you handle the thing yourself, you know, that's not how they will do it for you. Mm. So how do you get or choose a person to be a salesperson? And my second question is, during the first quarter or let's say first six months, is it advisable to choose a salesperson or you must be there yourself? Okay. All right. You see, as a profession or as a professional, um, your time is, is limited. You spend a lot of time, as you said, in a hospital. And it's a good idea you open a shop. Uh, you don't just pick somebody who comes to say, I want to work. And for me, I will not pick boys. Unless they can, unless maybe cement or iron rods, I will not pick boys. I will pick young women without boyfriend, those, those who have not taken boyfriend. Yes. I'm saying that because they're stealing a lot of the times the men are more radical you know they uh, that much inconsiderate the women are a bit considerate until they meet a man and then they start to misbehave but you have to also have a training you need to talk to them re recondition the way they think and um, anytime you are free you pass by and then you must also have structures to, to look at the sales that they make and what they are not taking from your business because you want to do something like that, it will, put, it, will, it will place some pressure on you, but you still have to get through that. And what you want to learn is the ability to pick the right person and let them manage it as if you were there or even better. You know? And there is always somebody like that who can do for you. You only have to go through a lot of things, a lot of disappointments you know, to get to the right person. But if you, if you don't go there at all, then if something is happening wrongly, you will not see. You know? So you check the sales, you check the stock. You know, sometimes you can even do uh, what they call mystery shopping. Let somebody go and spend and see. Give somebody money. You say, go to that shop, buy these things, and come and do it. And then at the end of the day, let, let's see if the, the girl will tell, tell you whether somebody came to buy indeed these things. You know? So let's say maybe they make sales 500 every day. You give 500 to somebody to go and buy. If they come and tell you that today the whole sales was 500, you know they are not telling the truth. Because every day maybe they make 200. Now that somebody came with 500, they are saying they make what? 500. It means they are stealing. For stealing, they will steal. But what you are trying to do is to manage, you know, the volumes that they will take. You want to manage the percentage. <laughs> but the stealing should not stop you from doing it. If, I'm, if I have a place and I'm there and I make 100 cities, if somebody is there and they make 80, I will pick the 80 and I do 10 of the 80s. 
Do you get me? If, if I'm, I'm there in the shop, I'm selling 100 CDs myself. I bring a lady there, she sells 80 CDs. She's not making the 20, but I'm profitable. I don't have to be there. I will take the 80 and do a lot of them. Let them stay the 20. 80 times 10 is 800. It's better than 100. Do you get me? So don't worry so much about what they will steal. What you want to know, what you want to do is, is, the, is the business profitable? What they sell? Can you still be risk talking? Hmm? So once you make some profit on it, let them take some. No problem. But you can do a lot. So I will do that. Don't panic when they, they take from you. Don't worry. Is it profitable? That's what you want to achieve. And don't, you, know, you go there, they have changed it, you know. But when you go there, you see a lot of boys there, no. Some of them are reasonable in terms of what they take. But some of, a lot of them are very... Okay, so I will, I will... But if you pick somebody with children and wife and things, then why are you shocked that they, they steal? Because you're paying the person 200 Ghana cities a month. And the person has a wife and children. What do you expect? Yes, because there's a lot of pressure on that person. You know, so really uh, do that. And then expose them. Teach them. Get them information. How they can also become better. Mm -hmm. And where the future of the business can lead to. Mm -hmm. But when they leave, find another one. Don't cry. <laughs> Is that okay for you? And the other one, you ask another question, eh? Okay. It's like sometimes from the first six months, they mm -hmm. might behave very well. Yeah. But looking at some influences yeah. from the house, mm -hmm. oh, if I were to be the one in this shop, mm -hmm. maybe I'll, every day I will mm -hmm. just go and deposit 10 CD in mm -hmm. my Momo wallet. Mm -hmm. This man will not see mm -hmm. every day. Meanwhile, from the scratch, that wasn't yeah. how. Yeah. They are, but ongoing, yeah. they will be changing. Uh -huh. That's why you are so the boss. So must you sack the person? Yes, or? that's why you are the boss, isn't it? You go there, you see that this guy has become disrespectful. You say something, you say one, they say 20. They are not there to make sure the business grows, so change them. If they don't change, you have a talk with them or with her. You came, this is how you were. Now you have changed. Now you have affected the sales. If you don't change, then we have to. You don't have to even tell her you want to change her. Just say that somebody is. Yes, bring somebody. All right. It's your ability to drive the thing. You are, you, are the, you are in the seat. You are the one engineering everything. So if something does not go well, don't just ponder and uh, let me see, let me see. No. Take the action. You know? Make sure it works. If it fails, it's not a girl, it's you. You are the boss. All right. So always, yeah, we are very soft-hearted people, hearted people, you know, so, but if they are still in, they don't care about you, so, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Please, I'm Eunice Ankuma Fio, Eastern. Please, I have some personal financial decisions to make, so I would like to know if after the presentation you'll be around for like okay. 10 or 20 minutes so that I see you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, boss. Yes, sir. I'm Stephen Getia. Yes, sir. Okay. Please, my question is, I'm a, a first-time business. Uh, I want to start a business as mm -hmm. a first-timer. Should my focus be on the gains or the profit or how to grow the business? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I think you should, you, should, you should look at both. The business will grow because you are making extra, I mean, you are making profit. Even if you are re reinvesting the money in the business. So if the business is not profitable, but automatically the business will go down. So it must be profitable and you must also look at growing the business. You know, but automatically, um, I think the best of our businesses grow organically. They grow from within. If, if the business is making profit, you put it back in, you expand it, not the loan, no. The one that you are not the one that your your friend brought, the one that the business has made that is growing. Those are the businesses that work in Ghana. The ones that you somebody brought from somewhere that you put in, you are likely to you know, even if they are stealing, you won't pay attention. You know, it's like somebody who works. Uh, let's say you're a civil servant, uh, your pay is two thousand, but then because you do other things, you make five thousand from you know. You know you are not proud of it, but that's it. In this case, your budget is not 2000 Your budget is what? 5000 That's what you have mastered to live with. The moment you go on retirement, 
Now, nothing comes in. You get a heart attack. You know, and that's why they go out, they go fast. Because then they did not get the skill set to live within their means. All right, so thank you so much. I think we want to go on Facebook and then get some few, a few comments, few questions on there. Those in the hall here, please, if you want to ask questions, kindly come at the back here so that we'll be able to uh, get everyone seeing you out there because someone gave a comment all the way from Cape Coast that they want to see those who are asking questions. So <laughs> please kindly come here so that our friends and then colleagues on in watching live from Facebook can also see and then admire how beautiful we are all looking here. So Joshua Azongo has a contribution. He said, contributing to the ongoing discussion, a good business person must be able to predict the market, organize opinions based on predictions, take advantage of opportunities, respond to create the foundation that will stand the test of time. So thank you so much, Joshua, for the contribution. Then Mame has a question. Mame said, please, my next question is, if you are someone who is not good in business, but you have a capital like 10,000 Ghana cities, please, what would you advise I venture into? So that is what my mate is asking. Sarah Ampon is watching. Thank you so much. Sarah Nicholas Atariba, you're also watching. Thank you so much. Mohammed Atenga from Tamale, you're also watching. Thank you so much for watching. So, uh, Mami wants to find out. I have 10,000 Ghana cities. I'm not good at doing business. What would you advise I invest or I venture into? So I that's think, the question from Mami. Thank you, Mami. Um, I think what you are looking at is um, financial success and financial freedom, financial independence. Uh, some people will use business route. Some people will use uh, investment. You know. So if you are not that you know tough to deal with business, but you still don't want to be 50 years. Uh, 60 years and have nothing that brings you money. So mommy should look at, I don't want to put it in business. Because let's say you open a shop, you really have to manage it. It can give you more business, uh, more money, but it still gives you a lot of work. If uh, somebody was also say, oh, I want to buy a treasure base, it gives them something, but it's not much. You know? But you're looking at, okay, what do I, what instrument do, do I have to put my money in over time? You know, so let's say some people will just say treasure bills or stock or things like that. Some people will say, okay, maybe I want to start a cocoa farm. Somebody will say, I want to build some unit, small, small uh, houses for people to rent. They are all investment. You know, so you have to look at what you're able to do. But business as in business that you employ people that they work every day, you need a lot of skill set to do that. So if you think you can use that route, route you can still work as a nurse. There are, there are lecturers who own hostels. There are civil servants who have cocoa farms. There are people who have apartments. There are people who have bought some stocks and they continue to buy. What they want to do is to build some wealth. You know, so you, you may not like business, but you still have to say that I want to build some investment for myself. You know, the business people can then turn an investment into a whole business on itself. But uh, I think you must have a place that you you put the money in that you're not going to touch, that money will continue to give birth. And that's what you want to do. You know, so uh, depending on where you come from, look, there are a lot of, just as I, I told the sister uh, from, I think, family, yes, there are things that run us wherever we are that we can put money in that will not need a lot of attention, but will still grow in value. Please, I'm Angela. I'm from Volta. Okay. okay, so let's say you've established something like a pharmacy shop. Yes. And you keep on restocking your things, but you're not able to track your profits properly. Mm. So what are the systems you can put in place to mm. track your profits properly? That's one. Mm. And then two, you've opened a place like a sonography center, mm. and then people come in for scans. Mm -hmm. People come in for scans. You've employed a receptionist and a sonographer. But this is the case that they have come into, they've agreed, and some people come in and then they document what they did for the person. And then others come in and they don't document what they did for the person. They pocket the money. And then you send a mystery client to the place. 
by not by you not sending a person there but another person sending a person there and in the case after the client brought the results you took a picture of the results went to the place and then went through the receptionist book and the person's name wasn't there you called for a meeting and then they were still denying until you brought up the results what is the best advice you would your professional advice you would give to me as as a manager of these two things and how to track my profits thank you <laughs> Wow. These are these are these are things that you will meet. Uh, these are the things that you meet as a business person. You meet them all the time. Even if you sack them today, tomorrow another person will come. I think it's part of the cultural settings that we have developed. There are some places where because they have taught them that what is not yours is not yours. You know, they have taught them. So even the person is sleeping on the street, if you put your money there, they will not take it. They have taught them. And I think that we have not taught ourselves these things. So when people get access to money, the money's spirit becomes more powerful than their own spirit. And I dare say that they will pray in the place every day. Me what? Don't they play? Uh, pray? They will pray. They are, they will, they are Christians. I will say that um, for the uh, sterno, um, I think that have frank uh, discussions with them. And um, you will always see that somebody amongst them is the one leading it. No matter how good the person is, you have to take him out. Yeah, take him out. It means that if they deny to that extent, it means that they, are, they have really mastered the craft. So they, and they know that they can run you. And they probably don't think that you will sack them. You know? So you have to do that. The pharmacy, um, but you have a pharmacist there, or you are the pharmacy. So what did he say? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's part of it? <laughs> so now the pharmacist is your, is your partner. Okay, he's an employee. So, so I think that if the pharmacist really wanted to work, uh, they would try to follow the, the things that you have agreed. You know, so if they are not following... If they are not following, they are not paying attention, but maybe it's also part of the game. The pharmacist. My partner is not a pharmacy. My partner is a PE. Okay. And then we've employed a pharmacy in the pharmacy we've opened. Okay. It's at a distinct place, mm -hmm. and the sonography is also at a distinct place. Yes. So it's like we've employed people here. Mm -hmm. We've employed people here. Yes. Please, you understand? Yes. And here, so we, are, we want to track the profits we are making from the pharmacy. Mm. For the sonography, we are able to track because once you buy the machine, the rest is um, the yeah. paper and everything yeah. that you buy. So we want to track. Since we are restocking almost every week, we are restocking and we are not able to track our profits properly. That's what we okay, want Okay, but do. do you know the value at any point? Do you know the value of the things in the shop every every point? Since we buy every week, we, we don't really have the time to go and be taking... You want to come in? Yes, please. Come. Sorry. Hello. Yes, madam. Okay, with that issue, mm -hmm. I also have a pharmacy shop. It's mm -hmm. a drugstore, chemical yeah. shop. Mm. We don't have a computer for that. Mm -hmm. But we know that all the things we, we sell over there, we put a profit margin of 30% on it. Mm -hmm. So let's say I buy para mm. one CD. I make sure that there's a 30% profit, like how we sell it. So if the thing is 10 CD, 30% of 10 CD is what? Three, uh, th uh, it will be what? Three CD. Three CD. So I'm going to sell it at 13 CDs. Yes. So at the end of the day, we make a sales of 1,000 CDs. Mm -hmm. 
I, I calculate 30% of the 1,000 cities, and that is my profit. I take it out. Okay. So the 70%, mm -hmm. I invest it. So I you buy the to things that, stock? Yes, to buy the stock. Mm -hmm. So that even if I'm not there, and I come and I realize that things are dropping, then I know stay. that you are still in me. Okay. So this is the simplest way you can yeah. do it. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> so, no, is she okay? Because that's that's a very good question. Are you okay? You do hear what she said. Uh huh. Okay. So, madam, yes, answer here. Is it out of the box or is it? Please, is it out of the box? The 30% is it out of the box or in sim like a strip? So the um let's say let me take uh let's say Zinkovit. Zinkovit syrup. Let's say I buy it at 20 cities. Sorry. I buy it at 20 cities. Uh -huh. So, the whole box is how much? Even if the whole box is 200 cities, and I know that I'm putting a profit margin of 30 cities on it, it's going to be what? Uh -huh. So, I make sure that all the things I sell, they have a fixed uh, profit, which is the 30%. Uh -huh. So, I know that what I'm putting in the thing, the profit is 30%. So whatever I sell, mm. because it's for everything. It's not like some are 20%, some mm. are 30%. Some are, so that I will be able to track my money. Simple. All right. Thank you. The whole box, yes. I put 30% interest on it. Because if I put 20% on something, 10% on something, it will be very difficult for me to track it. And because I really want to track everything, everything you is 30%. Flat. Okay. Everything is 30%. All right. So the moment I sell something, I take 30% out of it. Yes. And then the 70% 70, 70 left, I'll go and use it to buy, buy. something. That's so it. when I realize that the pharmacy, things are dropping, because it's supposed to be the same. Mm -hmm. All the time, I should have the same thing. Or, uh -huh. I know how the things are. So if they are reducing, that you should click me that yeah, something taking. else is going somewhere. That's right. Uh -huh. So that's what yes. I do. Perfect, madam. So uh, I think that is it. Yes. Yeah. But sister, you, you would have to maybe get somebody to help you to do that. Get somebody who, who maybe understands the numbers well. And, and be, be, be tough on them. Okay. Okay. The one selling the things doesn't do the pricing. That's right. And then if you really want to see if the person is adding on, like it's supposed to be 25 cities, and the person is selling that 30 cities, you can do the mysterious. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And sometimes they come and they bring their own drugs. Wow. So you go there in prompt. <laughs> so I make sure, my husband and I, we run it. I make sure every day we go there. Mm. We go there off time. And then I'll send you. I'll send you. And when I send you, I'll check. Uh, because the place is for me. I know where I put my thing. That's right. So I'll make a fast check. Mm. And where I'll send you, by the time you go and come, I'll, I'll, and I'll make sure... Everything is fits again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. My name is Kluche, Eastern Region. Yes, sir. Um, in the speech, you, you made mention of um, we should not compromise on our finances. Yes. And then at another point, you said we should desire to help. 
Yes. So I want to know the difference between not compromising mm. and then having the desire to help. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, not compromising mean, will mean uh, don't think that your future finances will just take care of itself. You know? And don't cheat your way to financial independence. It does not work. But in the middle of it, when you meet somebody who needs help, don't say that because my future is so important, you can't help anybody. Then that is not, uh, I don't think that is right. There should be somebody that you can always help. That they come. But then you have a formula that you're following. So the next 10 years, this is how much I want to uh, invest or have. But then I'm still helping somebody. Uh, that's what I meant. Thank you. Yes. I'm so from Bonahafo. Yes. Please, would it be okay as a businesswoman, because I'm not always there, mm. to set cameras all over? Mm. Because where I used to go, mm -hmm. my boss set cameras all over. Yes. But to our surprise, certain cameras are not even working. Yeah. But psychologically, we feel. He's watching. Yes, and there are times he just calls the shop. This person is doing this. Why is this person doing this? Why is this person? Mm. You see, and he has shops all over. Okay. And he has set the cameras in all the shop, mm -hmm. and he has it on his phone. Even mm. if he's at home, yeah. he watches everything. Yeah. So sometimes cameras, some are not even working. Mm. But because he has psychologically made us feel like the whole camera is working, even if you want to do something, you, be careful. you are afraid. Is it good? I think so. I think so. If, if uh, Ordinarily, nobody should be there for people to be honest. You know? But as you know it, it's not like that. So if that can help, yes. Put something there. Even if it's not working, at least it makes them careful. Anything that you can put there to make people consider it. If they are stealing 10 and they can steal one, you are saving nine. You know? So I think, yes. Put something there, call in, let them know that you can come anytime. You know? Put something there. And the other thing is that raise somebody out of the team who really wants, to, wants the business to work. You know? It can be that all the people there, uh, all of them want to stay. Agree. <laughs> you know? So it's difficult for them to say that let's do this all the time. But always, when you go there, look at the psychology. You will see it through their body. This guy is now changing all their fingers, you know. And what you change the names are, tell me you change the other, the other free. You know? <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. So pay attention to the body language, to everything. You will always see. Yeah. Mm. But the cameras should help. My name is Sharon. Yes, Sharon. From Upper West Region. Yes. I want to know, is it a good idea mm -hmm. to allow a relative to run your business for you while you are busy at the hospital? Uh, it depends on the relative. Uh, I say, people say that that is not good. Uh, uh, I don't know. But a lot of the times, they don't have respect for you. A lot of the times, they don't think you deserve that much. But if the relative is a good person, uh, there's nothing wrong. The others are using the same thing. The Arabs are here. They use it. The Indians use their relatives. But it's the training that we have given ourselves. I think our problem is the training. You know? But for me, if your sister, your brother, your cousin, your father's son somewhere can work and they perform, why do you have to sack them? If they perform, why, why do you have to? They, now you have to put up with some of the disrespectfulness. You know? But if they are straightforward, um, I don't think you can discard it entirely. That my, my, my relative is not good. But you'll be disappointed many times too. Uh, and it shouldn't shock you. I have somebody who works with us. He's a relative. Uh, he's done good work. Yes, he's been very tough on the money. And um, I don't worry giving whatever money to him to go and do what, you know. In terms of respect, I think it comes down a bit. So then it, it's difficult for you to make them professionals. You, it's construction work, you know. But a lot of the purchases, he does them. And it's, it's done good work, you know. Um, you can train other people to do it, but uh, uh, I don't think somebody should be denied just because they are, they, they are a family. 
but they have to qualify and they always have to make sure that they have to think that you are helping them as well. You know, you have provided a job for them. They can't take it for granted. Yes. Yeah, I'm Thaddeus from Upper West Region. Yes, sir. A policeman, my question is, is it good to take loan to build a house? Hey, over. Now, what are you going to use the house for? <laughs> uh, say it again. Tired of renting. My, my, if you want to build wealth, if you want to build, because the loan, whether it's mortgage or the other one, they're not charging you less than 20% a year. So if they give you, let's say 200,000, which I doubt, three bedroom, you can build the 200,000. Let's say you can work with 200,000. 20% 20 on 200,000 is 40,000 a year. You know? So I don't know how much the bank will give you. And I'm not sure that if you are renting that much, that house, in a year you pay 40,000. So the interest that you are paying on the loan for that house that you are trying to offset the rent, that interest is more than the rent that you, you are going to pay. I don't know if, if you get me. Yeah, so it, it matters what are you going to, you know, take the loan fully or maybe just to support it. Maybe it's just 10% to complete your house. I don't know. You know, but if it's a lot of money in the hundreds, like 100,000, 200,000, 300, I won't do it. I, I won't do it. I would rather, I would rather build that money up. You know, there's a way that if you want to be rich or want to be wealthy or financially independent, you have to think. And if you want to have a car and a house, you want to think. They are not the same. And owning a house does not mean you are rich. You take care of that house anyway. Things will break down. Your electricity will be ten times the one that you are renting. Your boiler fee will go up. So it's not like you are going to save money just because you build a house. I think house makes you feel like you have achieved something. Your mother will be very happy. Your in-law will be very happy that you have a house. But financially, I don't think you have that much advantage. So take your time to build it. So that you don't screw the future. Your children will go to school. You know? All that. So I think that if you don't have a lot of money, build it gradually. And if you are tired of paying rent, then just go and do small things. Be there and be building it. But loan from bank, which, which collateral? <laughs> they will take it from you. <laughs> they will take it from you. So, uh, Please, what about a loan to pay, uh, to pay your, your relative school fees? Uh, if you can... If you can, this loan, loan, loan is too expensive. You know? Brother, uh, it's expensive. It's expensive. So, if you want, you, you, you don't want to screw the ones that you're building. You know, so your relative can work and you can support. But you don't take that loan to, to pay for that relative. Maybe at the university, when they finish, they were going to they are not going to pay back. They are going to marry. Eh? The first job, they will go and pick wife. They, won't, they will not even remember you help them. So I don't think you should jeopardize your future with loan, 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 loan. That is expensive. Some people pay 5%, 10%. We pay too much. So if it's cheap loan, maybe. But they are not cheap. You know? They are not cheap at all. So they create serious financial troubles all the time. From my experience, no. No. It's too expensive. I don't think we should even have loans in Ghana. I think it's too costly. And the, the stories are not good. The stories are not good at all. How can you charge somebody 40%, 50% and expect them to pay your money back and make profit? And consumer loan does not, does not build wealth. Consumer loan means that the loan you are using to buy TV, phone, car. <laughs> no. I don't know, but I don't think it's right. Yes, sister. I'm Sarah Canton from yes. Upper West. Yes. This morning, I'm very much impressed about what I've learned. Wow. And it's just like a contribution and an encouragement to my colleague, nurses. Mm. I'm a midwife by profession. Wow. Uh, when I close from work every day, I do this petty trading. I mm. sell yogurt. Okay. I sell you fresh 30 pesos, 20 pesos, one CD. Mm. So at the end of the day, when I close from work, I 
put my uniform, then I go around to sell. People always see me, ah, what are you doing? This doesn't fit you. What you working? Doesn't, is it not enough for you? Mm. No. Mm -hmm. This small, small 20 pesos, 30 pesos, you know, is bringing something home. Yeah. Uh, at the end, it will help you. Some of my colleagues will say, I don't know the, what to do. Stores are costly. I can't get 1,000 CDs to go. What I know tell them, it's not about a store. If you're able to get to a fridge, then you are going. Sometimes I can be in the house. People will call me. Mother Ness, we want yogurt. Then I go. At the end of the day, I can make 150 a day. Mm. If after three, three to four, then make this. I did, my salary, I, can, I will not be spending it much. Okay. I will save some. Yes, so this is an encouragement to my colleagues. You can do something small, not about store you open. Mm -hmm. Put it on your head. That's right. If you can, I have a motorbike. I put it there. Then That's I right. move around. That's right. So let's not pick. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes at the work site, patients come, oh, did you bring your gut? And sometimes I have to sneak in at the work site. That's and right. Sell. So yes. let's encourage ourselves. This petty, petty, this. let's use, let's. It's not all of us that can get that huge amount mm -hmm. to be doing. That's right. So this petty petty things will bring something wow. home. Thank you. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Midwife. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Impressive. You see, there's no excuse. There is no excuse at all. It's the school that has lied to us. You know? You, 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 your grandfather or your father was a farmer. They sent you to school. You now you say farming, you can't even go. And you are looking for a loan to build a house. Your father did not build with loan. You know? The money from the farm or the money from whatever is the money. If, whether you are selling on your head or in front of your house, it really does not matter. What it means is that are, are people paying for the services that you are giving? And it always picks from there. Tomorrow, it's a big uh, yogurt company. If she commits to it, too, she can do it. Eh? If she commits to what she's building, tomorrow it can be a factory. It's a matter of what, what I know in our country is that don't give yourself two years to become successful. Don't even give yourself ten years. A lot of the times, if you are working hard, you are working ten hours a day constantly on that thing that you say is a business. Give yourself twenty years, you see. You turn back. I know people just a uh, provision shop. They have built houses. Mr. Blair and the wife, they have built apartments. They, didn't, they don't speak a lot of English that we are trying to speak you. But they have money. And are professors who are begging government to stay in their bungalows. If it comes to money, don't bring your certificate. Don't bring your certificate. Have deliberate plan. So, madam, that's, that's, that's a good story. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Amado. Again. Uh, Mr. talked about... Uh, as a worker, most of the times you, you have a family, people call on you to help and all that. And sometimes it is really very disturbing. Yes. Actually, one thing that I am doing that I think we can learn from is um, every month, or have I, I, like I have 20% that of my salary that mm -hmm. I, I, I keep for family help or anyone who call mm. every month. Mm. And I will never spend beyond that 20%, 20 except probably it is life and death. Okay. So if you probably can make yours 10, 15, eight, but at least you have a percentage mm. that you agree on and mm. discipline yourself with. Mm. That this is the amount that probably I will spend on any family member who will call on me for anything. Yes, sir. If probably I've already spent up to that 20% and you call me, I'll tell okay, wait, probably next month, then... You, you come in. I think we can learn from that. That's right. Family pressure, you can never avoid it. Uh -huh. And you can never say you won't give them. That's right. They will call you all kinds of names. Uh -huh. But when you have a fixed percent of it, it helps. Thank you. I have a question that is, every now and then we see, we see these insurance companies mm. roaming around, mm. trying tirelessly to convince us to sign on policies, mm. funeral policy, what and what policy, child policy, education policy, and all that. As an expert in finances, what is your advice? Hmm. They will convince you to even kill your mother before she dies. Uh, I don't know much about it. I don't use it. 
Um, some girl came to our office, convinced me to do it, and they were taking money every time. I said, no, no, no. So I shut, uh, I shut it down. Um, you have to take story from people who have done it and been successful with it. But um, it's money that you, you have to track. They could be taking it, and when you need it, they start to bring all kinds of things to you. Uh, you would have been better if you were saving the money yourself. You know? So it has to be good. It has to be the, the quality of the insurance company. You have to check, check their track record to see. And you have to follow their accounts to make sure that they are, they are not going to tell you stories. You know? But find out from people who have also been with them for a while and what happened when whatever they promised happened. You know? Don't just, just be giving them money. Sometimes they just take the money and when the, the incident is there, they would just try to pull a whole different thing and, and waste your time. So follow it, but I don't use it. I don't use it at all. No, if my father dies and we can't spend uh, 5,000, we can't spend 1,000. You know, if my mother dies and we can't spend 50,000, we can spend what we have. After all, it's on the way. Eh? Uh, if we were rich, you know, <laughs> so I think that you have to, uh, don't put pressure on yourself and don't, I don't have any good story on that. Yeah, but um, talk to them and see if they are credible. Yes, sir. Thank you. Please, I'm Faustina Asan from Central Region. Yes, Faustina. Please, I would like to ask that, is it advisable to give out your product on credit? Like you sell it on credit. Uh. Because some will be faithful to pay at yes. the end of the month. Mm. Some too will not pay and... By the time you realize, you get the, You don't have anything. Yeah, so it's advisable to give it out. Uh, for, we, we, our people, we don't pay when we owe. That's a fact. So the person must be credible. You should start with them small, small. Then if they keep paying, you give them. If they don't pay, don't give them. I think that maybe 90% should not be on credit. Hmm? Because the owner, you will be fighting with them. You know? You will be fighting. And when they, when they pay, they don't want to deal with you again anyway. Because most people don't, when money goes to a lot of people, you forget to pay back. You know, there are a lot of people who owe us, <laughs> who ne will never pay. People don't have, and one thing about money is that when you owe, pay. You can't say that you want to be wealthy and when you owe, you forget. You will not be rich. Hmm? No. You owe somebody that you have been dodging, go. Tell him, listen, I owe you, I don't have this, but I want to start to pay. If you owe a bank and you can't pay or go and negotiate with them, I owe 10000 but it's tough. Don't switch your phone off. Don't run away. It's a quality of person that you are that you become. You know? And money really is, is about the thing that tests people's character. You really want to know somebody, look at how they, they handle their money. You know? Money and God are compared if, you, if, you, if you're not aware. You know? money and God. People love money. So if you owe and you don't want to pay, it's a character breach. It means that you are not an honest person. And never forget the people who you owe. Pay back. You may have problem, but go and pay it. If it takes you 10 years to pay, pay. If you have to sell something that you have to pay, pay. That is how you become great with finances. You can't cheat your way into prosperity. It never happens. You will lose it somewhere. Don't, you know, just as you can't cheat in a workplace, don't people have their money with you and you are trying to say this, this, this. No. Pay that. It's more important that you pay it tight. Pay those who you own. Because when they remember the money that they have with you, they ache. And that's not a blessing. You know, somebody came for your money, 10000 Two years now. Anytime you remember that, you really just want to write it off, isn't it? But you can't. Because you remember, ah, this person came to trick me. I trusted that person and they took me for granted. I think that the best you can do is to patch that relationship, go and pay it, sell something, give them plan, and commit to it. It's the best that you can do for yourself. I'm um, Clement Apore once again. Okay. From Western. Yes, sir. Uh, mine is a contribution. Okay. I think one way we can save mm. is to come uh, to become handy ourselves mm -hmm. it is not everything we need to call someone to come and do for us okay because there are sometimes we see artisans and then you call upon them mm. and then at the end of it they just delay you and all those things and then the, what you want it to be 
you end up losing it. So I think it is best for us. It is not everything like a plumbing work, you have to go and call, the sink is choked. You mm -hmm. need to go and call a plumber to come and work it out for you. So I think we should try. Let's not see it as, excuse me to say, a dirty job. Mm. We can even do this kind of petty, petty farming things at our backyards and all those things. And they are means by which we can save. Nothing is menial. That's right. We have to try and Thank consider you. them too. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, uh, Chief, do we have time or we are about closing? We are about closing, eh? Okay, so um, if you have no other question, uh, I've enjoyed myself. And um, the thing about it is that any of us could be here and speak the same way that I've spoken. All of us have different knowledge, different wisdom, different understanding of life. We should not trivialize it. Uh, you'll be shocked if you call your friends here to give them different topics, the things that they will say. And when you were talking, I was speaking a lot of things from it. And people have started their businesses. Uh, people are saving. People are investing. Some people did not even talk. But the things that they have in their mind and the things that they have picked, I, I think that is it. And uh, we should be proud of ourselves as a people. And never let anybody who lives outside the country make you feel like what you're doing here, you're wasting your time. Okay? You can easily change your destiny by following those things. Have a plan. Stay with it. Continue to read. Update yourself. Don't just stay with the head sector in terms of finance. Read about money. Study it. And God is a helper. And never let anybody think that God is against you because you did not bring money to him. God is love. It's for all of us. You know, help people and, uh, and uh, love life and love people. And uh, the men, the men, uh, the angel you are looking for is the wife that you have. They are far more. They are far more intelligent than we think they are. And they are far more intelligent than us. Listen. And a lot of the times, the mistakes that you made, your wife told you you didn't listen. That's why you made them. Uh, you will lose a lot of money when you don't listen to the woman. They have super intelligence than us, but we want to show, you know, we want to say that we are men. A lot of the mistakes that are made with money, she said, don't, don't, don't do it. And I went ahead to do it, and then shh, it locked. <laughs> so, pay attention. Pay attention. And, and, and they are equal. Don't think that the woman, you know, the way we have taught talked, talked, talked. No. They are equal with different strength. You are not better because, of a, because you're a man. This is a mind game. And they have the same mind as you have. You know, if it comes to maybe taking cement, yeah, maybe you are stronger. But this is the idea that we are discussing. Don't say that uh, you're a woman you sit somewhere, I will go and come. You go and come with blood all over. And then they have to, you know, take care of you. So listen, one of the places that you can build financial wealth is work together if you have a wife. Work together. You can have different jobs, but work together in the future. And stop chasing the women. Leave them alone. Stay with the wife that you have. You'll be able to build. Because that's how she builds trust. She knows that you're not going to give the money to another person. But why, sh why, she sh why would she work with you when you will bring another woman? She will hide it from you. And it's not her fault. You know? So open your mind. We have to hold you responsible. <laughs> Oh, you know, we live in a country that big men take girlfriends and we don't see anything. That is wrong. Why, do you, why, why are we shocked that they are corrupt? If he cannot be honest with the woman in his life, what else do you expect from him? You know? So, uh, men, it's about time that you, 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 you are fair. Okay. And they build. You can do 10,000 if you're alone. But you can do a million if you join your minds together. Thank you very much. Oh, let's give it up for Mr. Obe. Let's give it up for him. Um, I want to thank Mr. Obe very much for making time to be with us. I've indeed put down some few points that um, we should have a good plan 
we should also build a good network, which is very keen to me, that even as we are here, we need to at least build some network within ourselves. It will go a long way to help us and also take responsibilities and shape our mind. Mr. Obin, thank you very much. We are so much grateful. Um, I'm taking over from Mr. Darkon. He has been engaged somewhere, and I'll be taking over from him. From here, we'll be going for our lunch. But um, since it's not ready, we'll have to take some pictures, just as it happened yesterday with Mr. Obin and the wife. So we'll start. I wouldn't want to start with Greater Accra, because I know you'll fight with us. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mr. Obi, um, please, we want to have you here. Then we will start with Eastern Region. Yeah, with the wife. With the wife. Eastern Region. So you join. Um, I've already called Eastern Region. So um, let's start with Eastern Region. Um, I've already called Eastern Region. So um, let's start with Eastern Region. Asante region. 